Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we've got our very first truck here at FCR that showed up here because of our videos, which is really cool. This fellow right here, his name is Dennis, and he's got this 579 Peterbilt owner operator. This is our goal of bringing in trucks that are, we want, we want all the fleet trucks possible to come in here for work, but we also want to start pulling trucks from the side of the road, like mentioned in past videos, and some just plain old insurance jobs because a lot of these big fleets are self-insured and we're looking for private insurance work to come to the shop. So that's what this truck is. We're gonna be following it start to finish um, from the day it rolls in the shop until the day it rolls out. So this is just kind of a first look at the truck uh, before it goes in the shop. We're waiting on all the parts to show up here. It's gonna be about two and a half weeks, maybe a week and a half. We're gonna get all the parts from Peterbilt to fix it. But after that happens, we're going to follow this thing through the shop and hopefully two or three days, it'll be fixed, maybe less, which is really cool. We're going to be up in the top shop where we're working out of. But this thing, the feller that owns it said he was going down the highway at about 55 miles an hour and some road construction was happening and a truck in front of him merged last minute and he hit the back corner of the trailer. You can see right there, we just smashed everything up real bad and uh, went into the radiator and all kind of, maybe you can see it. Oh, maybe. Ah. Is the hood gonna fall off? Uh, maybe not. Uh, it might. Well, the hood's no good anyway, so whatever. But you can see right here, we're crammed all up inside there to the fan. The fan does not spin anymore. Bent up all kinds of parts up top. Lots of stuff to get fixed on this thing, so. If you guys have any trucks, that you're wrecked on the side of the road, anything like that, don't be afraid to give us a call here at FCR. Link right down below to the phone number and the website, guys. Your truck could come in the shop, we could tow it, and we'll follow it through the shop, getting fixed on video. It'd be really cool. Hope to see lots more trucks like this come through. This one is really, golly. It's a really nice truck. He said he did a lot of shows with it. I've never seen a 579 that looks this good, honestly. Like, it's it's done up right, and it's a really unique color. It's like a... Seafoam. Seafoam color. I like that. Yeah. That's what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> so, first truck to come to the shop from the videos. Really cool, guys. We're going to remember this moment. Hope to see lots more. Hope to be getting some phone calls. Side of the road accidents. Dude, I'm ready to go tow some trucks. That's going to be sick. I'm pumped. So today, we're going to be getting up to the shop, getting the fenders off the Tratter Taxi, getting them prepped for paint, and getting it ready for the Mid-America Truck Show. And who knows what else we'll get into today. Let's get at it. Well guys, things are going great here in the shop. These guys use hoverboards everywhere. I'm glad Amber bought me one for Christmas. We got the fenders off the Tratter Taxi here. Dude, look at that roll. So up next, we're gonna get these fenders all over here to the painting area. And Brandon and I, are Brandon's right over there. We're gonna work on starting to sand these things down and get them prepped and do some repairs from where I hit a curb a while back. You can kind of see that curb mark right there. And uh, we got some stuff to touch up on the truck. This tire is almost flat. I think it's got a uh, nail in it somewhere. So we gotta get that tire off and then we're gonna be getting the whole truck polished up, all 10 wheels polished inside and out, uh, touching up a few spots on the paint. We gotta clean underneath this thing like every freaking wear because the uh, truck that's gonna be sitting at the booth on carpet and uh, we gotta get all this axles and everything cleaned up underneath here somehow it's going to be fun so lots of cleaning to do on top of fixing some paint issues and things like that right now ryan is rolling over some of our carts we've got our toolbox over here this icebox radiator i think we're going to end up putting in brutus eventually um, but snap on stuff we're getting our 
bolts and nuts or nuts and bolts dot com. I can't remember the uh, lingo for that all set up and just kind of slowly unloading the trailer. And at the same time, we're going to be getting rid of a lot of things. Those are actually the spare tires and wheels off of Brutus. So we're going to be keeping those around here for something. Who knows what we may use them for, but uh, lots of more unpacking to do. These guys are just going at it. It's crazy how fast these trucks come in and they like have an assembly line of like, like this area I believe is like where the hoods come and they get all fixed up over here in the corner. And they like, as they go down the line, they're getting done. And then they roll into the paint booths over here really, really quick. They're painted they come out for inspection. And then once they come out, they go over to the corner there and get washed. And, uh, and then they go out the door like this 389 right here that is uh, had the front fender replaced and it's about to leave. You can see inside here where uh truck's getting wiped down and getting ready to be sprayed today. So lots of cool stuff on them. This is Blake Fitzgerald's truck, uh, Robert's brother, that these guys painted up Viper Blue. And this thing is looking freaking sick. So back over here with Ryan and we're going to uh, keep unloading the trailer. Got some stuff in here. These are the wheels for the Scania. Whenever we get that up here, we're gonna be getting those installed with some new tires. But uh, for now, let's continue unloading the trailer and uh, push this big welding table out. Get what out of there? Little nuts and bolts. Just bolts and nuts? Yep. All right, guys, so we're, we're testing the strength of the trailer here, because this thing is old. It's older than, this trailer's older than you, actually. It's like a 90s something. <laughs> this is a 2000s baby right here. <laughs> So uh, we got our good batteries right here. We're gonna get those put over there on the battery rack shortly and get them start charging. Uh, and trying to get everything organized really, really nicely. But I'm afraid to drive the forklift in here too much because I'm afraid I might fall through the floor, honestly. But we got a couple more things to roll out and uh, getting things out a little bit of time and organizing a little bit of time instead of having just junk everywhere. Because the guys, Aaron and Lake, will be up here shortly with our pallet racks and we'll be able to get them put in down there at the end of the shop. So guys, we're moving right along. Got our pallet of batteries, getting the toolboxes all lined up, organized. We're gonna be putting some pallet racks over here against the wall. Bolt bins all set up, looking nice and fresh. Uh, we got some big banners coming in. We're gonna be able to hang up on the walls, all kinds of cool stuff. Just a perfect area in the corner of this shop for us to do all the all kinds of work we need to do. Be looking out for tomorrow's video also. We'll be getting the ro rotator up here to the shop, getting into it and seeing what all it may or may not need as far as repairs to get it in tippity tip top shape. Uh, Robert will be driving it up here and him and I will be getting into it together on that truck. So these batteries all put on this rack right here and get it all set up. Something else that's gonna take a lot of getting used to, guys, and we'll be getting mics back fired up and running very, very soon, on probably for the next video, is the background noise of these guys working in the shop. They usually cut out of here around like four o'clock, so that's when it'll get really quiet around here, and they don't work Fridays, so these guys work four tens. We work, we work, we work every day, all day, all the time. But uh, we got the trader taxi back up in the air. We're gonna get this tire off here shortly, but before we do that, we're gonna get these fenders sanded down, so. We got some organizing done on the batteries, as you guys just saw, and the toolboxes kind of set up with a lot more unpacking to do, but I think we're going to call it quits on unpacking for now until we have our pallet racks here and we can get them organized over there on the walls. So let's get these fenders sanded down and ready for paint.
Well, guys, while Ryan's up there sanding on the fenders, uh, there was another set of these column lifts down here in the dyno room, which we'll be completely going through and cleaning and restoring this room and getting the dyno 100% functional very, 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 very soon within the next few weeks, I hope. Um, but we first moved the lifts up the hill behind this little uh, John Deere here, and it didn't work out so well. We got them up there, but it was a little sketch, so we found a gooseneck here on the property. I think it's Robert's truck and trailer, obviously. We're going to load them on that and uh, get them up a little bit safer. All right, we got these things all loaded up, strapped down. We're gonna get them up top, plug them in, and see if they're fully functional. And uh, the whole point of this was to, uh, I seen the guys see me use mine, and they're like, dang, those are nice. I'm like, I know where some are that aren't being used. Let's get them up to the shop, check them out. If they're working, we'll uh, bring them down there and uh, put them to work in the shop up top. And uh, see these, helps these guys keep from breaking their backs, laying on the ground. So guys, we're back down here, or up here in the shop. They got a little loud for a minute. We're gonna plug these in. The shop happens to be wired for these already because there used to be a frame machine right here and see if they work. And then if we can get them fully functional, we'll get some plugs added on this side of the shop so these guys can start using these for customer work. Maybe get a little bit more productive. They already get a ton done, but we can make their job easier. It's just basically some brownie points with the shop, guys. <laughs> messed up them lug nut covers. <laughs> yeah. What's that? What's that? I thought I heard something fall. No, I don't think so. Alright. Dude, these things, we just looked at the date codes on them. They're from 1997. That's old. <laughs> I don't think there's a breaker turned on right now for these. Guys, we got all the lifts put right here on business expense, but we can't get any power out of this that I can tell. I went and checked some breakers in the building, but being this isn't our shop, I'm not gonna get into messing with the wiring. Uh, there was an electrician out here who got our lifts wired, and Ryan says he's supposed to be back tomorrow. That's what I thought I remember. We'll see if he, if he comes back tomorrow, we'll get him to see why there's no power coming out of the box up there. Or uh, maybe I'll get brave and get up top there and check it out in a little bit. But for now, the lifts are there. They're all wire plugged in, but no power. So for now, when you get back over to Trata Taxi, the fenders are pretty much sanded to where the painter wants us to let him do it. So I'm fine with that. We'll let him do the final touches. Ryan's got them over there. I'm gonna walk over there and check them out. And then we gotta do some more stuff on the Trata Taxi and just more organizing. So we knocked a lot of it down. He said don't mess with the size because he doesn't want to lose that edge right there, the lip of everything. So, oh dang, I look like a smurf now. <laughs> Let's get over there and get the wheel taken off the Shredder Taxi. He's got a nail in it. I don't think his tires are putting back in your car, Ryan. I'm going to get this thing to the tire shop. Did not think about that. I think we put it on, on the roof of the charger. No. No. It's no different than putting mattresses on the roof like we did the other day. Yeah, very I'll different. Throw that picture up here on the screen. <laughs> oh, this thing's heavy. Hey, nope. Do I look like a sissy boy? Yep. Oh. She's flat. Usually they bounce a lot higher. Right there it is, look. Oh, yeah. Let's pull it out. Where'd it go? I lost it. Good job, Ryan. What the heck, dude? There it is. Yep. So Ryan, for my birthday, bought me this brand new toolbox. This thing is so nice. Dude, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Yep. Oh, there it is right there. Put it back in the hole so the tire shop can find it. Well, let's get this in. Um, you think I'm playing, dude? We're putting this thing on top of the charger. No. Yeah, let's go. It is not. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. No. Uh-huh. 
Let's put it in the back of your old truck. Got a fat tire. Well, folks, our lifts are not working, and the reason is they are a three-phase lift. This plug right here has got three hot wires, and then the outside is the neutral or ground, basically. I don't think they have a neutral and three-phase stuff. The plugs up top here, which we pulled down, are not three-phase. There's only two. I took one of the plugs apart. And there's only two power wires and one ground, so that's why they're not working. And they're also not connected in the box up there, up there or in the breaker box so what we've got now is the extension cord for our lifts and since we are, have a plug centrally located in the shop we really shouldn't ever need the extension cord so i'm gonna do is pull a plug off of it which plugs into that plug already which is this right here and wire it up to these lifts and plug them in and they should turn on and work fingers crossed all right guys so we wired these lifts up to our plug over there from our extension cord and uh got them over here but the problem is when we turn our big box on here and according to the instructions you press this top button twice well there we go this breaker right here starts rattling so it's not happy i think it's bad kind of like bounces around right there and there's no fault codes going on so i think there's an issue with that maybe someone can comment down below this is where we need some help. If anyone has any of these old school lifts, these are Coney Model ST1072. It'd be cool if we can get these things up and going. Rob said he got these at an auction and never used them. So maybe that's why they were sent to the auction. But for now, we'll kind of tie the wires up and uh, maybe I need to order this breaker. Who knows? As I think our lifts have something similar to that in them also. Let's go check those out. So, ours are currently unhooked from power. Oop. And there is, there's these big breakers like right here that whenever this thing powers on, they they like suck in and activate power to everything. A little bit different setup inside here because it's computerized and much newer. But, what are you doing, Randy? I'm trying to learn how to ride this thing. See if you can ride it over the fork without falling. Come on. I ain't that good. You do a circle right into the forks. How about that? Go backwards? Jump up on it. Oh. Go full speed. Just lean forward. Go. Go, go, go. Come on, lean. Lean. All right, now come back full speed. Well, we're going to get everything put up on my creeper thing here. I ended up going over the pressure washer and pressure washing it and making it look brand new. This thing has not looked this clean in forever. Overhead table is what it's called for when you're working on a car or truck. Get all this hardware off here. The wrecker will be here tomorrow. We've got to get ready for it to pull right here in this slot for us to work on it and do a full detailed list of everything the wrecker needs. Dude, you need to chill. Don't do that. I'm going to start a GoFundMe for Ryan for one of these things. And then another GoFundMe for the, the medical bills. <laughs> I'm doing good. That was actually really good. I hopped on it and sit and knew what I was doing instantly. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Get some and then we've got Master Braden here and Randy. Anyways, Brayden, this is Robert's son. He'll be Hi. on the channel a lot, I'm sure. He's going with us Sunday to go pick up our heavy haul trailer. Yep. CDL driver in training. That's the deal. So, well, Randy, what are you doing, dude? Look at these bolts all put away. Where do you want them? I want to move that over there in the corner out of the way so we can put the wrecker here first thing in the morning. Mm. Mm. Well, guys, we're going to work on cleaning the shop up. I just hit my elbow. That felt great. Gosh, we'll be back out here tomorrow with the wrecker. Hopefully my elbow will be in fully functional and uh, diagnosing that thing, breaking out the whiteboard. Do we have a whiteboard yet? It'll be here tomorrow. It's supposed to be here today or tomorrow. Big one. And the writing down everything it needs, getting it picked up. We're Hopefully these lifts will pick it up. We don't know how much it weighs yet. We're gonna push them underneath it and see if they'll pick it up. I don't know, I think it might be too heavy. But anyhow, 
See you guys tomorrow. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe to Bruce Wilson YouTube and FCR. Link description below, as always. Give us a call for any of your towing and collision needs.